Tonight we're going straight in tonight because we've got a uh, got a jam packed we've got a jam packed show. Thank you first of all to our sponsors to Spa and then to our uh, our live sponsors as well Sovereign Sovereign as we've uh, certainly got them on board uh, recently and to Fitch and Leeds who've been with us since the beginning getting Gino Spot off the, off the ground and um, and keeping it going. Welcome to also to our guests tonight uh, Lloyd Edwards who's, who's the Reggae Charters. Uh, Famous name here in this town as well. And, of course, Fires Van Furen, our fast bowler, uh, who, who seems to have an endless list of guests that he that he can bring into Gino's spot and will always be uh, interesting. Uh, it's yeah, you know, it's amazing. always great to be here. And thanks yeah. for having me again, Gino, and nice to see you, Lloydie. Yeah. And, and but more importantly, we've been talking about this Bird Island thing for a long time. Bird Island. I'm going to adjust these microphones. I think I'm right in saying that. We can now safely say that, other than Mr. El Bay, you are now Mr. Bird Island as well. <laughs> the, the mother of Bird Island. The mother of Bird Island. <laughs> the mother. The mother. We, we, we had National Geographic shooting Shark Week, and yeah. um, they, they wanted me to, <clears throat> to read the script, they say the script, and the script was they were looking for this big, big uh, white shark, and they wanted me to say the monster of Bird Island. And I just carried in and I said, the mother of bird. I don't care. And after they said, Lloyd, that wasn't what you were supposed to say. Well, I'm not saying the monster because it's beautiful. And it's, yeah. so yeah. But uh, okay. just whilst on that subject, I mean, there's so many things. I know you've got to do on tonight. So we don't have a lot of time with Lloyd, yeah, unfortunately. 
But let's just dwell on the great white. You've got the concession now for the cage diving, have you not? Know? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Is there yeah. a concession? Is it one concession? One oak? Only? Well, at this point, yeah, one, 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 one person. One legal one, guy one only. Legal guy. And and the thing is, you know, the white sharks have disappeared from Cape Town, from Falls mm, Bay. Yeah. They've disappeared from from Conspire because uh, those two killer whales, Port oh, and Starboard, yes. have been ripping their livers out. And mm. of course, when that happens, they all just duck. Yes. Uh, which has happened. We had, which a, we had a shark guy on last year yeah. when they were all lining up there in plate, if you remember. Yes. And <clears> yes, <throat> yes, I, and we, we, we spoke about that. Two or three we, weeks ago, I read about all the sharks that are moving east. That's right. Yeah. So, so we, we, we in, in, we in the pound seats. If this east wind would stop blowing, we'd be fine. <laughs> and tell me, are there big great whites around um, Red Island? They are. We've seen some this year, yeah. What sort of size, really? Uh, the biggest one we saw was about 3.6 meters. Eh? Yeah. What sort uh, of nice. weight would you put to that? Uh, 3.6. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. 400 kilos? Okay. 400 kilos. And, and where are you, half conducting, a ton? Half where are you a ton? conducting the cage diving? At Black Rocks. They're where the seals are. On the back side of it? Uh, no, on the on the protected side. On the protected yeah. side. So okay. the sharks get there not because we're chumming for them. The sharks get there because... Um, that's yes. when the seal pups yes, are being weaned not. and they <coughs> learning learning to swim. Okay. And of course they're sitting oh, down yes, and these guys just come in and poof, you, you see it happening often then. Horse yeah, duvet. Exploding horse um, I see uh, Gary's actually you said there's a shark video. You were, uh, I think I think we've got a video here for, for some of the sharks. Mm. You want to have a look at that? I'm not sure who's, yeah, who brought it. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a quick All the inhabitants quiz. of our oceans are important. Sharks, once regarded as a scourge by mankind, play a vital role in ensuring that our ecosystems remain balanced and healthy. The docile yet ferocious looking ragged tooth shark, for instance, was almost hunted to extinction in certain parts of the world. Like all our marine creatures, they too need to be managed and protected. As time wears on, sophisticated technology, coupled with a burgeoning population, is playing a significant role in slowly denuding the all-important symbiosis that exists between all of our marine creatures. But to what extent? Curious, we decided to delve and examine both the negative and positive influence of man on an environment that is as beautiful as it is fragile. There we go. She was your <laughs> squid. Yeah. What did you say? <laughs> so it's it's awesome squid there. We're going up, up to the coachman. <clears throat> <laughs> to the coachman. Are there many times when you go to Bird Island on the shark um, cage diving things that there are no great whites? Yeah, it does happen. Is yeah, it? Yeah. 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 Sometimes they're just not around. And, um, yeah. Also, mm. the season seems to be shifting. Um, so. Yeah, but 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 we got them. You know, it's only us in Mossel Bay that have sharks. Of course, yes. Plettenberg Bay doesn't have a, a operator. They're not they're not allowed. Mm. So and but you know, logistically to get there, yeah. you know what Bird Island's like with with, with clients She's in those conditions, it can be yeah. a bit tricky. But it's beautiful, <clears throat> and you know what we've learned, we've learned so much from 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 doing this that we uh, we saw the guys offloading sharks here the one day from the long lines. I mean, thousands and thousands of sharks. You know, they when they catch them on they put these uh, two kilometer long cables, yeah. whatever, how long it is, with, with the hooks dangling, yes. bait on, and they catch every shark in the area. Just, I mean, they say- Great ones okay. included. Yeah, 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 they, we've, they, they has been, yeah. Anyway, and head off, guts in the water, head in the water, fins go to, to Asia for shark <coughs> fin soup. There's no nutritional value in a shark fin, zero. It's just, the, it gives the soup this consistency. Yeah. Consistency, yeah, that they yeah. like, and of course, all the meat goes to Australia. I mean, oh, really, really? Yeah, when I was in Aussie in two nineteen, I went oh, there nice. and uh, flake and chips. Our sharks, South African sharks, are getting eaten by Australians. Our sharks are going down the dunny, which is an uh, Australian yeah, toilet, yeah. fast food yeah. toilet, oh, yeah, right. and they're preserving all their sharks. And we try on. So we we petitioned the minister. We got yeah. three and a half thousand signatures and. We got the whole long shark long lining thing regulated okay. in, in our Goa Bay. There's a court case coming up now in December. They caught one of the shark long liners fishing in Dahoop Nature Reserve, yeah. our, our flagship nature yeah. reserve. Uh, and then and it wasn't it wasn't the 
environmental affairs that caught them. It was us. It was private people yeah. with drones, with everything yeah, that followed up. Cases, yeah. yeah, so so that's coming up, and there's <clears> going to be a lot of stuff that's going to come out there about what's what's been happening. But I've, mm. I, I've been sworn to secrecy, but <laughs> but we, we can talk okay. about that. You've later. raised an interesting point. I didn't know that the whoop was a primary or or main it's the flagship marine. Where I would have thought Bird Island would have been. Well, you know the Western Cape. They've got. Yeah, yeah, they okay. run the show, okay, don't they? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 Wait, 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 don't tell work. anyone about the Eastern Cape. <laughs> okay, we don't want them. Yeah. Where, where, where is it? Where, where? It's Cape where? Cape yeah, Town. Okay. Um, Mossel Bay? No, nah, just between Mossel Bay and Cape Town. Yeah, just there. before Minus, mm. yeah. Okay. But, but I mean, so, uh, uh, we, we've got the most dolphins here. We've got the, we've yeah, surely no, got a rich diversity here. Yeah, we have, yeah. Well, well, just to give you an interesting, or to put this into context, you might remember we were very fortunate to have made a few trips to Bird Island 20 odd years ago, and we'd go by helicopter. And on every single trip, I would never get the front seat. I was always in the back of the chopper. Yeah. The pilots would say, as we were coming into Bird Island, we'd go over what we called, began to call Great White Alley. Yeah. And the pilot would say, hey, chick, 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 chick. And you yeah. know, like scrambling to have a look. Yeah. Looking out the wrong window because you don't know what you're looking yeah. for. Yeah. And there'd be a massive Great White or two in Great White Alley, mm -hmm. which is between Bird and Stag. Yes. If That's you're standing on that jetty that um, you and I, I went there with you once. Yeah. A jetty that you enabled me to disembark oh, and, jump and on film there. there but, but okay. In that alley, well, well, in that stretch of water or channel, yeah. the chopper pilot would see a Great White and then one or two guys on board would say, geez, I saw it, didn't Yeah. I never saw a great. I haven't seen a great <laughs> one. But now, just just, to, just geographically, um, there's Bird Island. You say Stag Island. What, what's Newland Stag? There's a four or five little islands. Around. Little islands around Bird mm. Island. Okay, small ones, and and you, and you go in between them. I mean, it's deep enough. Well, he's a skipper, but I would assume you come around the eastern side, and you, then yeah, there's two approaches. There's actually three approaches, but depending what the waves are doing. Okay. And a couple of a, narrow little narrow, ones. There. It? Yeah, it's very <laughs> even scary. Not well, you know, we've got Ray Rodokanaki on, and I was very yes. blessed to have gone with the Rodokanaki family on my first trip to Bird Island. And I remember George as mad as a hatter. Yes. On the first trip, when we left the harbour, Miller's was a solid six foot. Yeah. And it was one of those freak December swells. And we had finished playing Northern Transvaal the day before. <laughs> and Georgie phoned me and he said, we're going to bird tomorrow. Yeah. And I mean, geez, that's every fisherman's dream. Yeah. And we left the harbour and I saw these waves cranking off Millers and Newmood Beach. And we came in around southwest. Yeah. And I remember seeing these waves breaking off southwest there, like pipeline lefts. Yes. Like probably 8, 10, 12 foot. And I thought, oh, jeez. <laughs> Luckily, I'm with George. And George had a very good right hand man, a guy called Willie Ross. Yeah. You know, so I felt quite safe being in yes. their hands. Okay. But just prior to that, yeah. they tried a similar thing. And we've got Ray Rodder Kanaki on tonight who will tell yeah. you the story. Yes. Where they try to get in trail around southwest, I think, for Yellowtail. And the boat got put on its side. And luckily, George, who had had his arm quite badly cut, had the wisdom to get up and push the motors forward to wrap the boat. Yo. So, I mean, you know the dangers of Bird yeah. Island. Yeah. Sure. Crazy, These man. things pop out of nowhere. And, and uh, I mean, it's, and, and obviously the, the the diversity, the wildlife, the the, the fish there, um, and and the and the penguins particularly. Uh, when, when was that that early footage done? Well, was I had it recent or just before we came on the show. I had a chat with uh, to Lloyd about the penguins. So yeah. should we go to the penguins because Lloyd has got a do on this evening? Yeah, yeah. Um, when Jan van Riebeek's men found their eggs to be a delicacy, the onslaught on the little black and white creatures began. Although well cared for today, the populations of African or jackass penguins have over the centuries dwindled greatly. And that's our, our um, the guy doing the, the, the talking there, the, the commentary there is uh, squad cars. is the squad cars guy. <laughs> oh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Malcolm Gooding. Malcolm Gooding from Malcolm squad cars. Wow. But uh, so, uh, we, we're getting onto, onto the penguins now. Right, so, right. so tell us, tell so us the we, story. So when we filmed this stuff, yeah. which is about 22 years ago, sure. and we had the chat outside before we started, 
St. Croix Island had 55,000 penguins. I remember the scientists used to, and they were quite excited about that. So let's talk about the current situation. Okay. Um, all right. So the penguins have got one, one huge problem, <laughs> is that they can't fly. And they can't do like, like gannets can do 400 kilometers to go and look for food. So penguins are stuck to their island. When they've got chicks, they've got to forage close and they've got to feed the chicks. Uh, the other important thing about penguins is that they are an indicator species. And that means that they indicate what's happening in the ocean. Okay. So if the penguins are going down, yeah. you, can, you can study that. It's like a canary. Yeah, can but you mine. can't see what else is going down um, on the islands. Yeah. So that's very, very important. And they're easy animals to study. And they're very charismatic and everybody yes. likes them. Oh, okay. The so mm -hmm. if we can just put that first slide on there, um, Gary, yeah, of the penguins. So yeah. here's a picture that I took in 2000. And in 2000, there were the population of African penguins was estimated at about 60,000, which we think is a lot. But... You know, there's these shifting baselines. So when I grew up, I saw that many penguins. When my son grew up, he didn't see that at all. Yeah. But when my father was alive here, yeah, there was probably heaps, heaps, heaps more. Yeah. So we've got to put it into a historical uh, perspective. And what we found with the penguins there, there was there were like millions in the in the 1900s. And the early sailors, luckily for penguins, they don't taste like that. Okay. So they ate, they ate a couple and they're like, nah, they're not, so uh, they're not yeah. doing that. So they didn't. But what they did, I mean, can you believe this? They would take them, smash their head against a rock, and put them in the boilers with the coal oh, because no, they were yeah. full of fat. And Yo. that way they, they made the coal burn better. So they would yeah. like, you'd put in like a half a ton of coal and 10 penguins. Um, then after that, you know, you had, the, uh, you had the Israeli wars and the Suez Canal got blocked. And then the big, the big uh, oil tankers then had to change. So they're going through the canal. They had to come past Cape. Cape. And they weren't designed for the Cape waters. Yes. Because, you know, out there you've got a, a current doing 10 kilometers an hour that way. And you've got a wind doing 100 kilometers that way. You get this massive peak. So these big things broke up. And yeah, yeah, yeah. you got what was called a, um, a, a calamatic or casual, I don't know. Calamatic. Uh, Kinematic right. something oil spills, um, Correct. where you got sort of millions of liters of crude going into the water, and that killed like thousands and thousands of thousands of penguins. It would kill half the the the, the, the flipping thing. And and we've actually found what happens. We'll get to bunkering a little bit later, but yeah. what happens is oil comes from deep under the earth's surface, yeah, yeah. gets pumped up, but oil is made from plankton. That's where all comes from. Plankton uses oil to float up and down in the water column. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what happens is this is oil from plankton from billions and millions and millions of years ago. Mm. It's got a it's got a chemical in it called DMS, dimethyl sulfur, and that is the cue that gets penguins to come to the fish. So when 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 zooplankton, the animal plankton, is eating the 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 um, phytoplankton, yeah. the, the, the plant plankton, that's getting eaten, the plant plankton gives off DMS. All right, which is the same as what you got in plankton. The penguins. We did these experiments with with my partner then, Dr. Lorian Pitchigree. We yeah. put different mm -hmm. orders. They cue in to where the oil is. So the bunkering mm -hmm. here. The minute there's a spill, these penguins, penguins are in there because they go to that smell. And then they'll find the fish that are there to eat the plankton. Yeah. So they're there for the kind of wrong reason, but it works yeah. for them. That's the so these oil spills kill thousands. But it's the same time they're getting coated in oil. Exactly. While they're yeah. to feed. They right. My son was at one of the last spills. They Jamie. They right in there. Mm. So okay. So that killed a lot of them. So that brought the numbers down. And then what happened in Port Elizabeth? Uh, penguin eggs were a more of a delicacy. In fact, you know, but, but Dustin Island used to have a population of millions of penguins. Today, there's just about none. Mm. But in Parliament, mm. on a Wednesday morning, scrambled penguins' eggs was the was the oh, oh, So no one missed Parliament on a on a Wednesday morning. Wednesday. And the same thing when those when those uh, eggs kind of the sea, you know, when they'd been taken out, they started coming to St. Croix. And in 1937, mm. um, there were 
between one and 2,000 penguins left on St. Croix. And there was a public outcry. They made it a provincial nature reserve, and the numbers started increasing again until we got to the 60,000 uh, that, that you saw 20 about, odd years ago. 20 odd years ago. What happened then was the, 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 the fishermen on the west coast depleted the fish stocks. So your mm. anchovies and sardines plummeted. They caught everything. Like everywhere in the world, the, the, the fishery scientists get it wrong. There's a total collapse and nothing left. And the seabirds, as the fish go down, the seabirds start going down. Yeah, obviously of course. That's it. Correct. So that's what started. So then the fishermen switched from the west coast and they started fishing Port Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, in fact, Lloyd, am I not right in saying there were three gannet colonies on the west coast? I think Possession, Mercury, and Ikeba. Yeah. That, that was in, off Namibia, yeah. Off and Namibia. and the one, there was one at Saldana, the, the one on Malchas mm. Island, Gannet Island, which is there, and yeah. Lambert's Bay. And are they all still, well, I know well, the three in Namibia are gone. Yeah, they kind of still, there's just a few of them, but um, mm, yeah. the other ones are. are, are mm gone down anyway so, so our penguins so, so, so now we've got so now stocks. we got so now we got fishing we've got this fishing pressure um which was happening and if i'll show you the next if you can just go to the next slide gary you saw what it looked like that's what it looks Jeez. like today so you go two slides back go two slides back and then you'll see one back like that's what yeah, that's what that's when i picture. started my tours that's what it We're looked happy like to see you. Yeah, wow. and okay. if you so go two one. slides on, you've got that. I mean, we took, so, so sorry, the previous slide, what year was that? That was 2008. So that was so still you've still gone from frame. early 2000s to 2008 Eight. to current. To current, and that's kind of what, what you're again. getting, what you're getting oh, now. Yeah. So, yeah, and uh, just to, if you go on, on to the next slide, we look at Bird Island, and that's where I took that picture last week. So Bird Island has not been affected. And Bird Island is, is what you call a control island. So yeah. we, we're watching St. Croix numbers go down, yeah. mm. and we're watching Bird go down, but not, not that bad. As much. Or not, not as much. So what has changed? Well, well, let me ask you the question. Sorry to be rude here. Mm. Sorry about that. But why haven't they found sanctity then on Bird Island, the St. Croix? Because penguin? penguins don't do that. Not? No. It, well, you get, yeah, they do, but not to such a great extent. If they were born there, they will kind of go back there. It's mm. pretty much the same with seals. Yes. You know, unless a new colony starts somewhere, like boulders, but yeah. generally they stick around. So, yeah. It's, so, um, so just to recap, 60,000 have become 3,000 on St. Croix. That's right, yeah. So we're down to 3,000. Yeah. And Bird Island is, is it And Bird Island, is, is, it, it used to be like about, I think about 5,000. I think they're four and a half, somewhere around there. So it has gone down, but but okay. but, but not too much. So, so what is the what is the reason then but for, for Bird Island doing okay? Or well, here we get. Yeah. Here yeah. we Great get. Wow. So, okay, yeah. if you... um. If you just go to my next slide, Gary, this this will this will show you exactly what happens. Not that one, the, the next one. Yeah. Is that it um, off the jetty? That's the... off the jetty there. Okay, oh, okay. so this is uh, Dr. Lorian Pichigrew's research. This is um, 2008. So what? So what? I was assisting you with that. What? Those what, tags. what no, yeah. So what happens is you grab the penguin when it's got chicks. Okay. Okay. So it will have nests, but it will always come back. So yeah. you, you whack on a GPS. And you put it back onto the chicks, and it's not going to leave the chicks because okay. it stays there. Then what happens when the partner comes back? It goes out foraging. Yeah. And if you look at St. Croix, that's the one uh, closest to Port Elizabeth there, you'll mm -hmm. see the tracks. Yes. All right. That, those are the foraging tracks of the penguins while fishing is allowed. Yes. And if you look in the bottom section, that bottom right-hand side, yeah. you'll see that's the total take. Of um of anchovies and, and 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 sardines, and if you see that big circle is I right see, yeah. outside the harbour, so the boats yeah. will just go out. They'll catch there, oh, and yeah. I mean that that, that is one thousand five hundred tons. You know that they, it's a massive what they're taking. Anyway, okay. so that was what they were doing when they when the fishing companies were allowed to fish anywhere. So those tracks are about 75, 80 kilometers. Bird yeah. Island yeah. is pretty much. Uh, it's not so Contained. bad. They're not going that far. Yes. Okay. Then if you look at the St. Croix one, you'll see there's a, a line running. Yeah. That's a 20-kilometer radius from the island. All right? Yes. And then there's a little circle over Rye Banks. Yes. So yes. what happened was the following year, 2009, no fishing boats were allowed to fish within that circle. Oh. 
And Bird Island was the same. They could fish there if they wanted. The birds is the control. Yeah. Let's see what happened when fishing was banned in that circle around. And look what look at their tracks. Jeez. See well, that? Yes, yes. Okay, so now there's less effort it's going into the around. penguins, yeah. less uh, energy spent. Yeah. They're bringing more fish back for their chicks, and the chicks obviously have a higher chance of fledging. Okay. Bird Island is the control in science. You've got something yeah. called the control. Yes. You can see nothing's changed. So the it's not that the that the the, the sea conditions have changed, or there's more fish or yeah. less fish or what have you. It's pretty much the same. That can totally um, displays the fact that if you, it's not rocket science. Yeah, if you yeah. stop fishing close Good. to the islands, yeah. the penguins are going to make it. Yeah, and yeah. that was that was a, a, a study since two thousand and eight. And the fishery scientists would not buy in. They were saying, no, there's other factors. The scientists here weren't allowed to say overfishing. It was a, it was a rude word. They couldn't say oh, it. Really? And they've only now has the minister stepped in and said, stop fighting. I mean, the two groups are just about killing each other. He said, right, now no more fishing. Okay. So we've got a, I think it's a, I think it's about a four-year or something. I'm not exactly sure. Around the island. Yeah. Okay. 20 Ks around so the So now, yeah, 20 so yeah. So that's been done. So now... Why are St. Croix numbers still dropping? Good question. If they're not at bird. Good question. And what's your theory? Well, <laughs> we've been fighting this so, for a long time. So, is, is if, that, you, if you don't say what, that, so say. what's happening? What's happening in the bay now? <clears throat> we've had for the last six or seven years, we've had ship to ship fuel Bunkers, transfers. Yeah. We've had this fuel being transferred. Now, um, I agree. There's you know there's money to be made, but that money is not coming into our economy. Yeah. The biggest money coming into our economy is tourism yeah. and marine tourism. So we're flicking the dice here. Or make Some people are making this money on bunkering, yeah. but it's not coming back. And you know what? Yeah. They never did an environmental impact assessment to yeah. see if bunkering should be done because they called it a gray area yeah. because it's, it's never been done. So hang on a second, Lloyd. Who's making the money? Exactly. No, well, who, is? who is? Who is? Who is? There's I, I obviously don't... some consort. <laughs> there's some consortium yeah. of businessmen. Why go, do you yeah. think SARS has impounded five or six of the bunker barges? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that money is not coming into the economy. It's no not tax. coming into South Africa. Okay. It's getting. Thank it's you. going elsewhere. And 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 you know we've got to look after our marine resources because this is the future Absolutely. of tourism. This is what people are coming here. Really? And now this population is just keeps on going down. Yeah. Mm. Every year it gets, you can see, we took God Blanche, the old, uh, Shane Bless, he's old, 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 what Derek, Derek, Derek Watts, Derek he said this is a tomb to the African penguins. It's a tombstone. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and it is. So, yeah. So anyway, so, so the only is one, one is, is, is bunkering. And, and you and know yeah. what? The only way that you stop something like bunkering is through legal efforts. You know, you can say what you want. You can have pictures in the newspaper. We can talk about it. But until you take them to task legally. Put the petition out there. Yeah, yeah. but you, you need well, more we, than I that. I think we did something. That was the last time there was mm. a push to do to at least um, stave off the legislation or something, wasn't it? It was going to be opening. They were going to let them do more bunkering. Well, yes, we got that stopped. Well, yeah. not us, but you know, we, yeah. we did do legal. Uh, yeah. South, Sand Cobb, the Coastal Rehabilitation of Penguins, they, they, they're they very strong and, and they've got yeah. a lot of uh, bird life, South Africa, and all those guys yes. are all involved. But, you know, we all we all kind of put in our bits yes. with and we stopped them getting new licenses issued. There was mm -hmm. a moratorium. Mm -hmm. And now these boats have been impounded, so I'm not sure where we're going to go, but we, we, we're following it closely. And, you know, we have to... We have to stop it. Well, they're not They're not allowing them in Cape Town. They're not allowing them in Durban. So they're just coming here to camp. You know, that's mm -hmm. what I see. Whenever you, you, you look out in the ocean, there's like 10, 12 huge ships out Correct. there. Correct. And they're all just there because they're bunkering. They're not mm -hmm. there to bring us money. No, they're not, not there to all. trade that with money, us. That money doesn't come they're in not, And then when they just given us a fantastic stat. Mm. 20 years ago, and I remember when we started filming on Bird Island in 2001, Mm. Norbert Clargus, you might remember Norbert. Yeah, Clark. of course, yeah. yeah. Doctor Took Professor him out Norbert. There, mad as a yeah. hatter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> lovely yeah. guy. Yeah. He, he's, I remember him telling me, Bird Island's got 55,000 penguins. They're going to build the harbour. Penguins are going to go. Yeah. No, Lloyd's just proved it. They're 3,000 mm. out of 60,000 in 20 years. That's mm. mm. uh, 57,000 penguins less. Gone. Yeah. And gone. where have they gone? 
They haven't. I asked him the question. Why didn't they go to bed either? <clears throat> yeah, it's died. crazy. It's crazy. So, so it's very I mean, sad. In fact, I, I mean, I know Arnold Slavitt was on a, on a little while ago. He he talks about the, the fact that the, the seagulls are, are also chowing the, the penguin eggs. I mean, what what what's no, your no, thought no, on that? I've got I've got the what's your thought on that? The seagulls. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I can tell you what happened on Bird Island. Yeah. Um, they we were getting a lot of, of uh, predations on, on on the penguin eggs, and I mean that the gulls would pick them up, mm. and eat them, and then drop them. It was littered. Mm. So I said to my partner at the time, I said, "Oh, we'll start shooting it." Yeah. No, you cannot do this. I said, yeah. "But obviously, no, no, no. We'll what? We'll we'll do, we'll do some research." Yeah. I'm like, okay, what are you going to do? So they got the ranges, and every day they counted how many penguin eggs. And the venture at the end of the season, there was like a continent twelve thousand penguin eggs. Yeah. Okay, that, that couldn't breed. Yeah. And then uh, after all of that, okay, now we're going to start shooting the gulls that are taking the eggs. So oh, they started yeah. shooting. Jeez. So you know how many eggs we found the next year? Three. <laughs> <laughs> so then yeah, she writes yeah. a paper up. Okay, and yeah. that was then used. Yeah. She says, "You see, this is how science works." Yeah. You do this and you do that and you monitor it. Now that can be used in other areas where you've got problem yeah. guard. We saw a bad thing at bird last week. Eh? We saw a seal predating on a gannet, ripping its stomach open and taking the fish. Tells um, you a story, yeah? Yeah, so that, you mm. know, you get these rogue seals that start and once mm. they start and they see it's quite easy, they don't mm. stop. Um, it happens, like the, I've seen that. It's like Port and Starboard with the great whites. Exactly. Yeah, once that exactly. starts, it doesn't, I mean, Okay. Lloyd, it's been uh, oh, good having you. Always again. a pleasure to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> when you got to I, I, I behaved myself. I didn't say the yeah. F word once. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Not yet. <laughs> no okay. Lloyd, All right. Thank you so much. Pleasure, guys. Great to see you, my man. Thanks. Thanks. Fires, and we've got another case coming on. Okay. Just I think we need to get Dave in there. Thanks, Nate. I think we need to get Dave Smell in there. Yes, Dave Smell. We're talking about the wreck of the Donnington. Is that right? Yeah, part of the history of Bird Island. The British East India ship, the Doddington, en route from England to Madras in India, crossed Algoa Bay. Oblivious to the inaccuracy of Dias's early maps, which depicted the African coastline to cut away rapidly to the north, the ship, amidst a great storm with 270 people aboard, sailed headlong into Bird Island. Two hundred and forty seven people perished. Twenty three men were washed ashore. All right. Davy so Smell. The the dining the, the, uh, Davey, we're gonna get Dave on. Yeah. You can see Davey, Davey. Davey. How are you my man? Oh, no, nice haven't again. seen you since yeah. haven't seen you since nineteen eighty. <laughs> or about or there about. Yo. How are you, Dave? Yeah, that's right How about that. Yeah, very good, very good, man. Now, Davey, yeah. <clears throat> to move on to the chapter that um, you very kindly given us your time for, which is a an integral part of the Bird Island history. The Doddington, 1755. 23 survivors lived on that island for six months. And I think I'm right in saying that for many, many years, people believed that the Doddington had hit a reef a kilometer or so off the island. Until you guys rocked up there in about what 1977 was it? Tell us the story. 78. Yeah. 78. Well, yeah. the original there was a there was a pinnacle sticking out, low tide, high tide, high tide. You didn't see it very well, but there was a swirl around there, white water. But it was about yeah. 90 foot deep, and it was about 900 meters from the island, almost a kilometer from the island. And Great. they'd been going down there since. 1755 i think they, there was a there was a team that came quite soon after it went down uh, i suppose they were after the gold but they kept yeah. going down with their rudimentary equipment you know like they had barrels and they'd go they'd go lower themselves down in barrels with weights um but anyway for for many many years until dave, dave allen and jerry Fernick, uh they they recruited me i was a surfer they they i was at avalanche pretty much <laughs> Many more days than I should have been. <laughs> uh, were you a student at the time, Davey? And then, and then Dave, Dave came to recruit me, 
uh, and then we I went up to the Sacramento. They took me to the Sacramento a few times. Never actually dived, but um, but was on the on the trawler to to observe them pulling up cannons, etc. So that's where it all started. And then they 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 groomed me into thinking that I was going to be a bucky boy. In other words, I knew the surf. Uh, yeah. So I was able to take divers in and out of the break. Um, unlike most um, stories about wrecks, people always think they just sink in the middle of the ocean. But the majority of them yeah. actually hit something. So basically, the, 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 David had gone to Lloyd's of London and had pulled out a whole lot of uh, survivors' accounts. And then That's right. them knowing and us knowing, but David and them were the ones that came to the conclusion, um, the, 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 the activity of the wind and the currents, and they were professionals. They've been years, they've been in, in, in the water. Um, so they figured out from one of the di divers' accounts, survivors' accounts, that <clears throat> it was 20 minutes from when the boat hit to it landed, it hit against the island, spilt its guts. And they figured out they okay. could never have come from Doddington Rock in 20 minutes. So they figured out by the wind direction uh, that they were, you know, the wind direction, it must have hit one of the reefs on the island and swung around. Correct. So based yes. on that information, yeah. before they even got in the water, they found it within about 10 minutes. So yeah. while they were, while they were looking for it, I was... The book says that you, no, you were the guy who just... No, Dave, Dave and Jerry were the ones that were... They didn't want me. I was I was supposed to be the bucky boy. So <laughs> after they found it, they came rushing back. And but they, they'd given me a shark banger and two aqualungs to go and just get used to being under the water. My first dive I'd ever had in my life was in a swimming pool in PE. The second dive was in the harbor in PE. My third, my third dive... I'm trying not to use the F word. Uh, my third dive <laughs> was un under the Itosha trawler by myself oh, yeah. uh, with a shark banger, just swimming around, getting <laughs> used to the idea of breathing underwater. And <laughs> then they said to me, sorry, you're not going to be the bucky boy. You're going to dive. So the next <laughs> dive we did, they took me onto the wreck site. So that was my fourth wow. dive I ever had in my life. I was doing professional uh, Marine archaeology, as I say. Yeah, that was now, interesting. Davey, there's a lot of mystery attached to the salvaging of the Doddington because, number one, you kept it very secret. And number two, if I'm right in saying you guys had um, chartered a, a trawler by the name of Itosha, if I'm not mistaken. And Itosha, yeah. And in those days, yeah, in those days, the harbor closed at 10 o'clock at night and you guys would sneak in there at half past 10, and then take all the gold and the cannon and whatever else to a mystery site. Now, tell us about that, because this has always intrigued me about Bird Island. Yeah. Yeah, there wasn't much of it. It was a Dave, Dave Allen's father in Warmer. They, that's where basically we took everything, but from the Sacramento. But there wasn't much gold at all. Um, yes, it was the gold trust story. me, I was oh, there. The no, gold. The, the, gold, the gold. We were after the gold. <laughs> we were we were after the gold. Uh, so it's still there. But what what happens? Yeah, it, probably. What happens with gold? It works its way to the lowest point, um, yeah. and because of the nature of the metal. So there were a lot of big potholes um, in the around the wreck site, and they could have been anything up to six foot deep. And the fact that we could only get in on average two days a week means we could have been working our butts off unloading one of those potholes to get to the, the gold. Uh, we'd get halfway, then we'd have to finish the dive for the day. Then the next time we could get in was maybe three, four days, a week later. Uh, then all the rocks had been through the, the activity of the ocean. All of the, all the rocks and boulders had filled it up. So it was almost impossible. To empty those and so we found um a, a watch cover jerry and i both jumped got off the went off the side of the the avon and we both spotted this gold watch cover just lying on the top of the 
the reef there. And we both <laughs> shot down to try and grab it first. But there was that. There were a couple of little chains. But yeah. unless Dave and them was, was sticking them somewhere, but I doubt because Jerry and I did a lot of the diving. And so uh, there wasn't much gold at all. Yeah. And then, and then but Jerry, it, nice uh, idea. But um, the, yeah. so the silver <laughs> coins, the pieces that ate, and duck of tunes, that's yeah. what I found. I discovered yeah. I was swimming through a little gully, and I just put, put my thumb onto a little disc that was sticking out the side of the rock. I snapped it off and saw a silver. I called Jerry over. Then we recognized that was they were actually silver coins. So we ended up getting, I think, about 20 kilos of, of those. But most of the activity was um, loading the copper ingots. Uh, the, the, well, we went there over two, two separate sessions uh, for about six months at a time. The second yeah. time, we found a lot of those coins and four cannon. There were four cannon we pulled up. And a lot of the time we were lo loading copper ingots. We were making nets on the island when the weather was crap. Um, and then it was also, we also discovered two other wrecks. One was a, I can't even remember the name. Uh, the, you might know. It was the, uh, there was a tug from the Second World War. Uh, era 1939, it went down. It was completely intact. And then there was another, another uh, ship that wrecked. It was carrying um, uh, ammunition for the Boer War. Yes. I, and I really uh, so we, we, we dug today. that up. We dug a few. few what's that? I, I read about that today. All, what's you that? dug up a whole lot of bullets, did you not? A bullet. Some bullets or something. Yeah. They, they were, they were, the, the cases were encased in a conglomerate. So they were protected. Mm. So the wood was still there, and, but it was very delicate. So we had to dig all the way around it. And sort of bring it up to the surface and then keep it in in water until they could preserve i didn't didn't see much after that what happened to them i think they took them back to pe but uh the yeah. tug we went on to quite a lot because that was in about 60 65 foot of water on a protected side of the island so we yes. that was when the weather was crap uh we used to go and basically go and scratch around and there was yeah. cutlery plates uh it was still totally intact and we we pulled all the of course we pulled all the, the portholes off, and I got one yeah, which uh, I don't know what happened to it, but it had my age <laughs> on it. It was porthole number twenty three, and that was my age at the time. <laughs> so I thought that was quite cool. <laughs> and and David, tell me what. But sort that, of depth, that was a mad experience. Yeah, what, what sort of depths did you find the the majority of the Doddington treasure in? Oh, depending on the tide, it was shallow. Uh, depending on the tide, it was 15 foot, maybe. Uh, when the tide went very low, it was get, would go as low as 10 foot, then up to yeah. a 17, 18 foot, maybe 20 foot, as depends on what part of the, part of the site you were on. And so yes. uh, yeah, I spent a lot of time on that side, I tell you. <laughs> and am I right in saying But it was pretty shallow. Like I said, most uh, it's, it's a myth that boats just sink in the middle of the ocean. Most shipwrecks yeah. are hitting something and invariably land mass. Well, that's yes. a point I wanted to raise. So are we right in saying that that boat sailed into Bird Island itself? And you discovered it, yeah. as I understand it. Would have, it, it would have come in at a, at a certain direction it was coming in. It would have hit a reef, one of the reefs over where we used to catch Parliament. Um, okay. but, but, and then it swung around and it hit that reef. And it swung around and then smashed up into that site where where we found it, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And and Davy, the flotation or getting the cannon off the bottom, how did you guys do that? Oh, uh, winches. We had winches, had nets. We, had, we, we used to sit uh, on our days off. We used to sit and weave these big, thick nylon rope nets. Yeah. And that's what we used to pull the ingots up with. And um, the, the obviously the little the cannon could be levered into those and pulled up as well. The, well, the trawler had was a fishing trawler, so it had a normal a winch that they Ingots could use for yeah. all <laughs> stuff. Ingots of what? Ingots of what? Ingots of what? What's that? Ingots of what? Copper. 
Copper. Copper ingots. Copper, uh, copper, uh, copper ingots. <laughs> you know, the... We, we, I think we got... Research. I think it was almost 30, 26 tons. 26 wow. tons of copper we pulled up. Jeez, like you should have waited yeah. until today Jeez. to sell that so, stuff. We spent Pretty most of our time groveling looking for <laughs> copper. You could have, you could have, you could have yeah, flooded it, you know, the market uh, with copper and saved us a lot of hassle with our with our street lights. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, we could have left. We could have left the copper out for the for the people to steal instead yeah. of our wiring. But, there's just recently, <laughs> but there's just uh, recently yeah, the, the, the yeah. most of the artifacts went into PE Museum. Mm. It all went into PE yes. Museum. Uh, we had okay. to, in Some order for us to claim them. the site. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. You know, D Dave was quite a sneaky one, and he could have. Uh, I think they came back. They might have gone, <laughs> gone back to play Bird Island. Yeah, I know they went back to Bird Island. Yeah, <laughs> supposedly <laughs> to go and find more gold, but uh, what are they we know what we know what happened yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and up, sure. I believe looking at um, the book written by Jeff Allen, you were quite arrested by a great wife. Yeah. Were you arrested by the Great White? We had a we had a Great White that used to. The, the, the thing is, we knew then, because of our, our diving, what people know now about the shark population, yes. and sure. uh, Dave, for the sake of ego, used to like the idea of um, catching them and killing them. And um, I hated it because I think it's in there. That I knew even then. Uh, apex predators are not what you want to be trying to eliminate out of the ocean uh, or sure. anywhere for that matter. But uh, yeah. so we used to catch them. We used to have a rig, have one of those big orange buoys, and then we'd have about maybe about 10 foot of chain with a massive hook on. Then attached to the top of, top of that hook was another three or four tuna hooks, we used to call them. And then the seals used to come from seal, uh, Black Rock. Um, yes. is, is it called Black Rock, eh? Black Rock, correct. So that's yes. the company that now owns Ukraine. Anyway, so the I'm seal, if there was a sick seal, they'd come onto the island and we'd shoot them and then we'd cut the meat up and we'd put them onto these big shark hooks. Then we'd have about another 100 foot of, of nylon rope with a lead, a chunk of lead on, not an anchor. Because if the, if the shark mm. took the bait, it would run with it. Um, so you couldn't have an anchor to rip the whole rig up. Yeah, so yeah. that's how we used yeah. to catch them. <clears throat> Within about 20 minutes, because the hook's in the mouth, they couldn't breathe. So they couldn't, yeah. they, essentially they'd drown because they couldn't force the water through the gills and get yeah. oxygen. So with a big hook in their mouth, uh, they potentially drown quite quickly as well. It was about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. We used yeah, to pull them up maybe, the side of the boat. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. and just, just going back and then, to um, the, uh, it was my job. Yeah, carry on, I beg your pardon. Do the what? Carry on, baby. Yeah. No, carry on, um, your well, job. We, we, had, we had shark bangers that we that sort of Custom made with um, uh, seven point six two rounds, which are, which are our military uh, standard uh, um, R one or R four, whatever yes. they were at that time around. So we made these custom ones, and we'd have to the the the, back, the, the shot between the eyes, a triangle oh, between the back of the head and the eyes, is where you'd get them right in the middle of that, and that was the brain. And they'd yeah, you'd kill them instantly. Yeah. So we used to pull them up. They were they were exhausted. Pull them up the side of the boat oh, and pop them with a seven point six two, and then drag them onto the boat. But we used to eat. I made sure we ate them. Very yeah. tasty. T oh, very really much like right. yellowtail. Well, we don't want never, ever, never, yeah. ever, yeah. ever want people eating sharks now. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not That's great the to bad eat. old days. <laughs> not, well, we have a different taste to their own yeah, great yeah, to yeah. eat. I thought, Davy, tell me a story. You went there. Under well, the skies I thought, rather than just chuck them back into the water. Yes, yeah, no, no, sure. Sure, sure. We ate yeah, them. Or, chuck, yeah. or, or, or get chucked back into the water yourself. Yeah, she was. We, but, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, no, but we, we, we basically, uh, the, the, 
they had a lot of uric acid in the in the flesh so mm. to, in order to eat them yes. you'd have to it's kind, of, it's kind of same as the bloodline you get on the, the game fish um yeah that's very sort of uric acidy and so we used to soak it in salt water overnight and then that would sort of take a lot of the uric acid out and then it was edible we used to cut it up into pieces yeah. freeze it down because food wasn't that readily available on the island we were there over a year um two well, six month periods you. i was gonna and ask uh, so we, we had to be i was the one that was cooking most of the time but <laughs> And what's that? What was life on the What was life like on the, on the island? island? Yeah. Yeah, we didn't have obviously there no TVs, no cell phones. Um, but it's not like we there was no such thing as cell phones, so it's not like we felt we were missing anything. As uh, yeah. <laughs> we, the weather was often bad, so we would only be able to get into the water to work. Maybe a, so like I said, about a couple couple days a week on average, sometimes one. So there's a lot of time, a lot of reading, a lot of fishing. Yes. We used to go out specifically to fish as well because we also needed food mm -hmm. for ourselves, and we were building up stocks right. for when the helicopters, the, the the railway guys coming to service the um, the lighthouse. Yes, and uh, there yes. used to be about half a dozen of them used to come out with about. A Two tons of brandy, and uh, then they, they probably spent, they probably fin do, finished doing their duty and servicing the lighthouse in the first four or five hours, and then they'd be out there for like a week, two weeks fishing and getting wasted, and then uh, yeah. sometimes <laughs> I'd go back to PE. <laughs> uh, they'd send me back on a helicopter to PE to go okay. party because I was twenty three years old. No, I, and I was well, being deprived. I, I remember you well, Debbie. I remember you well. I know you like to party. <laughs> Lily's, you would mention stuff. Still do. <laughs> oh, and Debbie, man. just just for what it's worth, I'm lucky to be exactly, alive. What I got up to in Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> where exactly does that wreck lie? Where exactly? I want I want to hear it from you. Where exactly does the wreck lie? It's right up against the island, is it not? Yeah, I'm trying to picture the layout. It's a long time ago. Um, yeah. Pretty much in, in, pretty much in front of the lighthouse. Well, um, you say in front. You know of the where the, the Gannett the Colony. Side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The others where the Gannett Colony. If you're like looking at the lighthouse from the back of the island, there's a Gannett, mm. Gannett Colony on the left, and then there's yeah. the lighthouse kind of in the center. If you went straight over, more to the to the right. That's pretty much where it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, it's kind of, on, uh, kind of on the corner. Yes. Why, okay. you want to go down exactly there and scratch? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. I, I'll tell you why I ask you the question. I've had a dive there with, with the late Norbert Clagas, and he was saying to me, here's the Doddington below us here in a gully. It was basically just yes. out of a gully behind the lighthouse on the P side of the lighthouse. And... I wasn't comfortable on that dive yeah. because yeah. I knew what these oaks had encountered. Yes, yeah, the sharks. I read their book about. <laughs> didn't you call that shark Alfred? The the shark got given Alfred. Him he was yeah, he was fifteen foot. Life. He was a fifteen footer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, wow. When when we went when we got into the site in the morning, it was usually around about nine thirty ten a.m. Uh, he was still there. Hmm. And uh, he never used to come near us. They'd come and have a look, but because we were invariably working, fanning conglomerate to, to clear stuff away, to find bits and bobs and coral yeah, beads yeah. and stuff, there was quite a lot of sediment in the water. So yeah. he would not come too close to us because it would get into the gills and stuff. So, but he, they were, he was quite passive, uh, but around about 11, 11 a.m., 12 a.m., He'd go out yeah. to sea to eat, to go and get food, and then they'd come back if we were still if we were still in the site around three four o'clock. He would come no, back. You were on the five o'clock venue. After the while, after <laughs> yeah, after a while, uh, we, we we were quite familiar and we weren't nervous about getting in the water at all. We'd be on the rubber boat. We say, "Oh, there's Alfred." Then we jump in and carry on doing our work. 
And uh, <laughs> the, what we've discovered is if they knew, the sharks knew you were aware of them. In other words, if you swam up to them, then they would pull back. So in other words, if you if they thought you didn't know they were around, then they could attack. But if they knew you were aware, it was quite weird. We knew we, we had this quite a close thing with him. He was as long as the as our Avon it was about fifteen foot, and he never gave us. He never buzzed us. We had other sharks buzzing us when we were in deeper yeah. water. In deeper water. Yeah. yeah. But he never did. Mm. Oh, David, that's Davey. amazing, man! Uh, and, and incredible stories, uh, and, oh, and, uh, and and what a what an experience to to actually find the the Donington and, and go and uh, take up all that all the loot and the ingots. <laughs> well, and, I took David, nothing. Thank you. Funny, funny <laughs> enough, yeah, I was I was quite reluctant. Uh, I was a surfer, so this to me yeah. were. The divers, the diving crowd in P, I didn't think were very cool. Not as cool as us. So diving <laughs> yeah, wasn't the thing that I was into. <laughs> yes. So well, I was reluctant about it almost all the way through. Hmm. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> when, in, in later on in life, when I thought back of that experience, that was one of the most incredible things I could have ever got involved in in my life. Then it morphed Absolutely. into coral diving because David and I, David and them kept the coral diving. Um, under wraps until they felt they could trust me, I suppose. And then from yeah. that, when we got back to PE for a good few years, I worked with them and particularly on the coral, doing making coral jewelry and uh, until I had enough of that lot. Yeah. Schoolmarkers Cop used to spend a lot of time out there. Yes. But yes. I had my experiences with Dave and Jerry. I'm still, I'm in contact with Jerry. He's somebody that would remember a hell of a lot more than me. Um, yeah. I don't know what if you've spoken Jerry, to him. Man? Have you spoken to Jerry? 20 years ago. We have to find him. 20 years ago. <laughs> couldn't find him. Where is he now? He's still in Port Elizabeth. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he's, he's, he's living in Jeffreys Bay place. now. Uh, I'm in contact yeah. with him. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, I've got a lot of – he's given me a whole lot of slides and from those days. I've got some – we just wrote a book here as well. And uh, yes, so we put a lot him. of the content of uh, Bird Islanders in. No. Okay. I'll ask you, I'll send you a message for Jerry's number. I'd love to see him. I last saw him 20 years ago. We did an interview with him. Great guy. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's lovely. Uh, I, I was very close to him. Yeah, Wonderful guy. Jonathan. Wonderful guy. That, that's it. Great talking okay. to you. Yeah. Th thank you. Thank you, David. Um, okay, my uh, brother. There's a little video. We're going to, we're going to close out for you with a video, and we're going to get our new guest on. Yeah. Thanks for coming in, David. It's fantastic. Okay, mate. Cheers, man. I don't know if that's working or not. That uh, yeah, that not video sure. doesn't look like. No, no it's not. Uh, but we got we got another. We've got one more guest to come in as well. Ray Rodikanaki come come I think, through. I think what we need <laughs> is um, the topography. We're talking about the foot. The, we, we're talking about the uh, the fishing with you. Uh, well, we're going to talk that's... about the fishing on the species. Hello, Ray. Yeah, you know? Good, good, nice, really nice, nice to you. Well. Good know, to see you. Right? It's, a, it's this, this all good, all good. Well, second time you've been on as well. I think you yeah. you were in the in the wings with your with your dad. That's it. Talking yeah. about fishing, and I know uh, Mike's that's Mike's uh, first lab, yeah. The fishing. Absolutely, and you know I must just say, and it was great to have Lloyd on, but the whole itinerary got a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> tossed correct. around tonight, correct? Yes, yes. And we were originally going to start with Ray. Yes, talking about the trips to Bird Island and and why we actually talking about tonight's show. Yeah. So the betting order's been turned around. Yes, that's fine. We we, the opening bets for now. Number eleven. You, you betting number one. <laughs> no. Normally number one. Bring you betting number one tonight. That's fine. But be that as it may, <clears throat> as I was saying to you earlier, I had the privilege and I would say the honour of being invited to Bird Island with the Rotokanaki family. Yeah. And we have a video, oh, I think we have a video clip, if I'm not mistaken, about how the island was actually formed. And what is intriguing about it is the fact that it was once part of the African mainland. Yeah. And after the last ice age, it filled up. 
and the areas if you look at the pro if you look at a profile of the of of the island yeah the shallow areas and these huge drop offs and that's what i wanted to ask you about because i know you were very astute about the readings on your dad had the most sophisticated technology so let's just understand what went on around Doddington and Southwest Reef. Okay, let's start at the beginning. So we generally leave the harbour every single morning. As you know, it would normally crack a dawn. Um, mm. In fact, uh, you, you mentioned uh, leaving almost in the middle of the night. In summertime, we used to get up at 3 a.m., uh, be at the harbour and leaving by 4 yep. so that we can get to Bird Island. You're on your way there. The sun is rising up. Um, and my dad used to keep the fish found on to basically mark the bottom. Yeah. Um, for him, it was about, you know, while we're riding, maybe you see a reef, you can stop and you might catch fish, discover yeah. new reefs. Yeah. And he used to ride. So we used to see the profile of the bottom coming up to Bird Island. So starting, when you start getting close to Bird Island, the water is sort of like sort of 80 meters deep on average. You're coming off the south with grounds, it drops a little bit, and you have this sort of flat plateau almost yeah. coming into Bird Island. And when you get close to Bird Island, um, obviously about a mile, mile and a half, it will come up to about 70 meters. And then when you get close to Southwest Reef now, if you can picture in your mind, you're heading from P towards Bird Island. Mm -hmm. On your left hand side, you've got the coastline. Yeah. Um, you've got Black Rock, as everybody knows, so the first island you that you come into. Okay. And maybe half a mile, three quarter of a mile out to sea, there's a little point of a rock that sticks out, we used to call it Southwest Reef. That's actually where the, the incident happened with my dad and his boat. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Yes, so we used to ride towards Southwest Rock as our first stop always. And you ride so, so through there. Sorry, Red. Sorry to interject. So from Port Elizabeth, the, the line would be Southwest Reef. We'd ride straight towards Southwest Reef. Mm. And as you start getting closer, then you see the bottom will go from 70, 68, 65, 60, and all of a sudden it will start climbing as you get closer. So, so if you imagine a profile, if you drew a profile of the land from the mainland of Africa, you'd have this gradual yeah. getting deeper and deeper and deeper. So if, if there was no water there, yeah. and then suddenly you'd have this huge Drop. peak, like a yeah. lady slipper, I would imagine. Yes. Yeah. It comes out of, it comes out of nowhere where yeah. it will rise up and over a space of a couple hundred meters it'll go yeah. from 60 meters to 28 25 meters sure. yeah so it's quite a steep incline yeah and that's the 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 edge we used to fish up and okay. always early morning was our first stop right and um you know that's where we start we start fishing there and from there, then we'd move over and go to different spots, depending on, on what you want. And the species, but right? It's probably the most diverse area of fish mm. in our area. Um, I was just doing a little bit of a, a, a jot down to the species we used to find in. Uh, you'd have white muscle cracker, black muscle cracker. You'd have um, uh, red steam brass. We'd have uh, red Roman, Miss Lucy. Bastaman, uh, some places, Dagred, Scotsman. Um, there were just so many species of reef fish in that area. And cob, and I then, mean, I remember one day, sorry to interject, yeah. I remember one day catching my first Scotsman and seeing this fish come up, the most beautiful fish I could ever wish to see. Yeah. And then we moved closer to the island and we're going to come back to this in a mm. jiffy. And we were catching cob. The island was right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yet you go and stand on the side of the island, you you don't catch a yeah, car. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and here we are. Yeah, exactly. A hundred yeah. meters off the island, on his dad's boat catching cob. Yeah. Nice cob too. Yeah. We we, I mean, yellowtail is the most prolific species there, and the most uh, numbered fish and and the prize fish that everybody goes for Correct. to Good Island. But in between, there's all these other species. In the winter time, we used to kill back. Mm. Um, we used to get cob, cob shallows and deep water, depending on whether it's yeah. summer or winter. Mm. Um, we, I can remember at times we used to, if it was a calm day, we used to drift 
in the shallows. And we used to get Scotsman, we used to get Red Roman, we used to get the occasional Dagger Red, uh, mm. uh Red Stiembras. All these fish in those reef shallows would mm. come up. And from there, you maybe go to the deeper sections just on the other side. Now, you mentioned the uh, Doddington Wreck. Just out to sea, there was another rock, and they used to call that uh, Doddington. Yes. And that's that's where they believed that that ship had okay, they thought that it was there, yeah, correct. And, the name. and from there, there was another drop off to the other side of Ireland, and we used to go fish there. And that's where, um, Mr. Athlete, here, um, <laughs> can I tell that story? Uh, we yes. go, we go fishing, Definitely. he comes with us, and he says, I'm a, I can pull yellow, da, yellow tail all day for a living. He says, I'm a big, strong, fit, fit athlete. I can do this all day for a living. Yeah. My dad says, come. I can. <laughs> we go out and we go out to the reef. Uh, I think we call it the Six Mile Reef, if yes. I remember correctly. The island was right there. We go to Six Mile Reef and we stop and we go down. And it's a little bit quiet in the meeting. Next thing, Mike's into a big yellow tub. <laughs> now he starts pulling and he's huffing and puffing and gets it up. He's a strong uh, yeah. Catfish put it in. Okay, yeah, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> Bites up, goes down in interim, a couple of hours, us catching other fish, but smaller fish, yeah. four to eight kilos. Okay. His fish was probably about 15 kilos. It was a okay. big fish. Yeah. Mike goes down again. He just his bottom, bang, into another big fish. <laughs> yeah, and Mike is pulling up, and he's pulling, and you can see he's now starting to take strain. Yeah. <laughs> Gets the fish to the top, gaff fish, put it in. Like sitting in the corner, you just sit in the, the back corner of the boat yeah. and you see him taking his time corner. with the <laughs> <day, laughs> trying to take his time, goes down, uh, broken. He barely hit bottom and he's into again and oh, another no. big fish. Uh, if I recall, the, the third fish was 16 kilos, it's actually a bit of a monster. Oh, it was a fantastic day. I remember that Half, well. halfway up, this big man was on his knees <laughs> holding onto the rod, trying to get that oh, fish out. Need to say after that third fish, he actually apologized and said, okay. <laughs> oh, <good>. Correct. <laughs> I apologize. No, oh, yellow tail is strong. They they're yeah, beautiful yeah. fish to yeah, catch. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. Sorry, Ray, the incident with your dad going inside Southwest. So I wasn't on the boat that day, but I uh, remember my dad telling me the story vividly. So yeah. they used to troll around Southwest Reef because you used to get a lot of yellow tail there. So one of the one of these particular days, uh, the boat was actually Sea Princess. I don't know if you remember yeah, Sea Princess. Um, pictures of it. Yes, absolutely. They were they were trailing around there, and and my dad was in the back, and somebody else was actually behind the wheel okay. steering. And my dad said, yeah, "Take a wide berth around the island. There's big waves. Watch what you're doing. Be careful." And my dad said, "Back busy fixing up tackle and getting things ready." Yeah. And obviously, this particular guy, and I won't mention uh, names, yes. he kind mention of... the name. No, he, no he, he names. kind of <laughs> lo lost focus a little bit on where okay. he was okay. and then uh, got a little bit too close. Now, like Mike said, those breakers can come up wow. 12, 15 foot yeah. curling Probably. over. Probably. And a big wave hit the side of the boat and the boat literally flipped over to the side. And when it hit the, the, the side of the boat, actually hit the skipper side of the boat, which at that stage was the right-hand side of the boat. Yeah, yeah. And it smashed the window out. Everybody went to the side. Oof. Stuff went overboard, tackle, yeah. uh, bait, whatnot. Fortunately, no one went overboard. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this whole incident happened. Now, the wave went over in the boat. It was still on the side. Yeah. My dad recalls that they could hear the motors out of basically idling out of water they become yes, very yes. loud when the exhaust is out okay, okay so it was idling so the boat is coming back slowly 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 my dad looked up and he saw the next Another one way. coming oh, and he went and ran towards and he shoved his hand on the throttle to, yeah. to push the throttle forward yeah. and as he did that the first motor caught a little bit right yeah. at the boat second motor caught and Ooh. pushed the boat out Ooh. but in doing so of course the window smashed yeah he got a piece of glass straight oh, yeah. up his wrist of here, which yeah. when you came back, he actually go to hospital to yeah, have a cut sure. out and suit. But he, he rotted the boat. That, yeah, putting on that, right, yeah, at, right the, at the, the motor caught right at the boat, oh, pushed it through, soul. and the guys yeah. were lucky enough to get yeah. out before the next wave hit them. Unbelievable. And that's the dangers so of the island. You know, the, you, the you, danger you, of Bird Island. Yeah. Bird Island has always had this 
His father possibly painted this picture yeah. Yeah. of this dangerous place. And I remember we went there. We arrived there in the middle of the night one night. Yeah, yeah. And it was all, not all hands on deck, all eyes and ears on deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen for the breaking waves. Yeah. And Jesus, okay. you, you're shitting okay. yourself because, you know, yeah, yeah. and believe me, the great white population is different. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah for and sure. There was silence on this boat. I mean, Jeez, like, it was one yeah. particular night we went there. It could have been the night before we hit all those big yellow tail. Yeah. yeah. But it's always had a, Red Island has always had this, yeah. I mean, there's stories of ghosts. Well, you know? isn't it? I mean, er, in, in the early um, history of this place, I mean, I'm sure that they must have landed there. It didn't didn't uh, didn't the Portuguese land there as well before they no. before they no the first the first people who lived on that island yeah. were the 23 survivors of the Doddington. Okay, that and was about. that 1700? When, when was it? 1755. 1755. They so lived there for six months. That was and and also and the the. Um, uh, Squinny's one, uh, the Sacramento, the Sacramento no, was, was like, I think, or, 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 no, no, that was 16. No, that was 16. It was 100 years, yeah. 100 years before, yeah, 1755. So, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, the Doddington ran aground. And what was interesting, talking to Daly, they discovered the wreck right up against the island, yeah, whereas a kilometer and a bit off the island, yeah. There's a submerged reef that was called Doddington Rock. Okay. So people believed that the Doddington had hit that yeah, rock. Yeah, yeah. Came off. Then Davy Smale's gang here yeah. went to London and researched the diaries. And here comes yeah. a real story about Bird Island. Yeah. They researched these diaries, and three of the survivors kept diaries. Yeah. And they said in the days after the um, actual wreck. Yeah. They were walking to and from the ship, yeah, or the wreck, to yeah. gather um, food and whatever else. Yeah. So these are from the diaries or from researching the diaries worked out that it couldn't have been a K out to okay. sea because you're not going to walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Logs and stuff, I suppose. And are. that's how they found it. They okay. started looking around. And I tell you what, 250 years later, or 200 yeah. odd years later, yeah. the they place. salvaged all the cannon and, yeah. as Davy said, the gold the coins ingots, and, yeah. the ingots and whatever yeah, else they found. Say, yeah. But I remember Norbert Clarkus saying to me one day on the island, and just for what it's worth, after going with the Rodokanakis five or six times, yeah. you, you, as a lover of fishing, he said, I'm going to get onto this island one day. And yeah. it was very difficult to get onto the island. It was a closed book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Until one day I got a phone call to say, do you want to come to Bird Island to help tag sharks? Yeah. And I said, I'm on the next airplane. <laughs> we were living in Durban. Okay. And the following morning I was on Bird Island. Yeah. And my first cast on Bird Island, I caught a red steambrus. Yeah. Which is something that used to be caught yeah. quite prolifically in yeah, the yeah. 50s, 60s, and 70s. Yeah. But not so much anymore. Is it on, Nothing the, today. on the red list uh, today <clears> for, <throat> for, for, uh, for yeah, you can't eat, you don't want to eat it in the restaurants because it's but, but along with that, along with that, you you go and spend a week on the island, and we then started making a documentary, which is where quite a bit of this footage comes from. Mm, okay. And you live there for a week, eight, nine, ten days. Yeah. And you read all the there quite a lot of books in like I wouldn't say a library on the yeah, island, but yeah. in like a book in bookshelves. Yeah. And you're there for a week, maybe eight or nine days, and you read all this stuff and you read about the ghosts of Bird Island, yes. you read about <laughs> the history of Bird Island. Yeah. And I mean the lighthouse, yeah, built in 1852 was a wooden wow. structure. The lightkeeper would then send messages back. Yeah. To, to his boss in Port Elizabeth, yeah, saying life is unbearable on this island. The gannets are, keep flying into the lighthouse and breaking the windows. Oh, <laughs> then in, I'll, I'll tell you a lovely story about Bird Island. Yeah, in the 1920s, yeah, the lightkeeper, yes, he was about the seventh or eighth lightkeeper on the island yeah. since the first lighthouse was built in 1852. Yeah, so. He writes back to his boss, and by the 1920s, a homing pigeon was taking the messages 
tune from Port Elizabeth. <laughs> like I'll shine, uh, I'll shine the, uh, our, uh, our BLG guy that, that does the... Correct. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they bought these seven homing pigeons for three quid or whatever. And that's how, in fact, that's Shane how the Harbour, keepers that's... knew that the First World War had stopped. Yeah. Or ended. Okay, all right. The homing pigeon took a message on its leg. Jeez. Flew to Bird Island in 1918. Okay. But in the 1920s, the lot, there was a particular lot keeper who kept moaning about the ghosts. He was uh, having a lot of paranormal activity. Oh, my word. So, fast forward to 2001. Yeah. yeah. We rock up on the island, and there are two colored guys there, yeah. lovely oats, really yeah. lovely guys. They work, they're the lighthouse oaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we happened, I happened to fish with the two oaks one afternoon yeah, yeah. on the island. From the jetty yeah. there mm. in what we call Great White Alley. Uh, that was coming now. They, no, they, well, well, I, I, we started talking, and I mean, I didn't know them from a bar of soap. Yeah. They were two very lovely oaks. Yeah. And we struck up a conversation, and I said to them, Tell me now, are there ghosts on the island? Oak looked at me and said, What the cut, brother? <laughs> so I said, I've read this book. Yeah. And apparently, uh, they were living there. They were, yeah, okay. you know, they were like yeah. lighthouse maintenance. Okay, okay. They were there for like a month, six yeah, weeks. Yeah, yeah. And I said, I've read this book about the ghosts in the lighthouse. Yeah, cock. <laughs> so anyway, I explained to them what I'd read. Yeah. And I said, in the 1920s, the lightkeeper here used to send messages to his boss talking about the ghosts. Yeah, yeah. And he said, yeah, the inner spoke you. Was he spoken diesel? <laughs> <laughs> Inferring that that particular lighthouse keeper was obviously on the top of his head. I promise you. I think so. I buckled on. I, I was standing on the jetty. I absolutely <laughs> buckled. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Rani. You know, yeah. I've just spoken you. He's spoken diesel. diesel. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, having said that, um, I got this call. I was. Yeah. Desperate to get onto this island. And yeah. that was triggered by a game there with the Rotokanaki family. Okay, okay. And so you guys we eventually that, you got guys on there. Know that island well then. Yep. Been yeah. But yeah. to get onto the island is the difficulty. Ah. And is there a jetty or something, right? There are two on? jetties. Yeah. It's every okay. fisherman's dream. And I will, I'm grateful for the fact we try to make a documentary. Yeah. And we were doing really well. Until the Animal Planet pulled out oh dear. on DSTV and Mnet <laughs> okay. said, "Well, we are here as well." Okay, okay. But the footage that Gary shown tonight, yeah, is largely from the documentary we were making. And you know, Gary, if, if I may just ask in conclusion, yeah, just to show a little bit about what the scientists do here, yeah. um, the Gannets and uh, the late Dr. Norbert Clagus, who became a very good friend of mine. Yeah. And Dr. Malcolm Smell. Let's see if it works. We, we, These we, guys, we, no, the just for. During the 18th and 19th centuries, many of our marine birds were subjected to periods of intense exploitation. The Cape Gannet, for instance, is one of South Africa's most studied seabirds today. But during the guano harvesting era, and prior to the advent of marine protection programs, their future too lay in the balance. And a rather precarious one at that. Okay, so uh, I think he's got another video of uh, of Norbert. Let's let's have a let's have a squeeze. Gannets are unique to Southern Africa, or well, Cape Gannets, let's rather say, are unique to Southern Africa. They occur in six gannet trees. Three are situated in Namibia, but those gannet trees in Namibia are not doing very well. There has been too much overfishing on that part of the African coastline and gannets have declined badly along here. In South Africa, for, by contrast, gannets are doing very well, thank you. Um, it's probably most easily 
explained because our pelagic fish stocks are in a good state of health. That is sardine and anchovy, which is the main food of the gannets. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. Here's another one. Here we go. Oh, click it one more time. If you will. The biggest single factor in curtailing the growth of the colony and an event that nearly put paid to the gannets was the harvesting of bird droppings called guano. Ornithologist Dr. Norbert Klagers is responsible for many of South Africa's marine birds. People moved onto this island and began to harvest what they called the white gold. It made them rich men overnight. And large, thick deposits of guano had accumulated here on the island. Eventually it got all scraped away and as a result, the gannetry here behind us a, almost became cup-shaped. And then during rain, water would accumulate there, and that in turn affected the breeding success of the gannets, so gannet numbers were declining. There was people all over the show. There was uh, workers working the guano. There was even a, a little railway line on this island, and this made it impossible for the other birds to breed successfully. And it was only when the guano scraping ended that in the past 20 years or so that um, the gannets and the penguins and the rosy terns have recovered and are now well on their way of um, attaining the former levels that they used to have. Yeah, it's lovely to see so many, so many birds. Yeah. And that was, that was a couple of years ago. That was 20 years ago. So that's the, you know, I wish the, I really just hope that these, we can sort out this bunkering story and get the, get the, and, and the fishing, I suppose the fishing is a big part if they, if they protect those areas. Sure. It will grow. It will grow. I, I think cool. the beauty of the place is it was difficult to get on there 20 years ago. Yeah. It was just as difficult to get on there a week ago. Yeah. And, you know, I'd like to actually ask Gary just to conclude the main reason why we went there. Was to help Malcolm Smell tag sharks because okay. we're fishermen, all right, and and we conservation minded, much like yeah. all of us are. Yeah, and let me tell you this: not everybody enjoys this type of thing. Yeah, but this to me is like going to the Monaco Grand Prix, or going to Lord's <laughs> Cricket Ground. Yes, in fact, this is better than going to Lord's or Monaco for you. Or, yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. because you don't see this very often. Yeah. And this began, I was on an aeroplane in early September. And we took off over Algoa Bay, turned left, going to Johannesburg. Yeah. And I was in the aisle seat. There was the husband sitting in the middle and his wife here. And three minutes after takeoff, I heard the woman say, 10 past 6 in the morning, better say, oh, look, there's Bird Island. Yeah. Oh, geez, Bird Island's moved again. <laughs> you know, people don't know about Bird Island. Yeah. Yeah. And really, it's it's right here on our doors, beautiful. And, and, yeah, and I, I think yeah. what Lloyd was also trying to say, and yeah. what we're all trying to say is, there's that symbiosis. Yeah. If the fish are good, the yeah. birds are good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and the sad reality here, corporate South Africa, and I'm not going to point a finger at any particular corporate, yeah. but corporate yeah. South Africa come out yeah. with this, yes, we're behind conservation. Let me yeah. tell you something. Go knock on their door and ask them to fund... Yeah. Or documentary, or a documentary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll see you next yeah. week. Yeah, it's also money, and also you can't, you can't Correct. click point one. You see, that's the whole, that's the whole issue. But it is so, vital. so it's, it, it is up to the consumer in the end to to say, listen, we don't Absolutely. want to buy this, we will not buy that. You know, because that will change hundred percent. In the, in the, in the but it is vital that all these things are looked after. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, just to give you an example, in concluding, yes. Cape Receive. Yeah. We used to wade out there for muscle cracker, and you could wade quite comfortably without slipping and falling, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. We left Port Elizabeth and came back three years later. When fishing at Cape Receive, you couldn't wade there. Yeah. You couldn't keep your footing. Yeah. You were slipping, falling, tripping. And fish. 
<laughs> no, over the, the uh, bottom. Uh, uh, the, the bottom, the bottom. What the yeah. stuff is going yeah. on here? I mean, I used to wade you quite comfortably, never fall, never trip. And I thought, yeah. geez, I'm not pissed. Yeah. <laughs> and I bumped into Professor Peter Britt. Yeah. And he said, the problem there is the perlumina being taken out. Uh -huh. And as a result of that, the seaweed has been allowed to proliferate. Ah, okay, okay. So the perlumina's job in the ocean yeah. is to look after the seaweed, yeah, yeah. control yeah. the seaweed. No yeah. perlumina at Cape Perceive, all sent to yeah. China. The seaweed had proliferated. Okay, okay. And yeah, everything affect, yeah, everything affects each other. You know? yeah, so Sean little... Thompson said, Hoy the pebble there, the cup starts there. There's it. <laughs> and really, it does. It does. And, you know, 60,000 penguins yeah. to 3,000. There's and a no, problem. We, we, we have to keep on keep on pushing for that. Um, Correct. For that. Correct. But it? guys, uh, Malcolm, we yeah, don't have so a video. Can, there was a video of Malcolm. Yeah, so we, it's it's just a, quick, by, a concluding just, a video. Um, the reason why we got into the island, I beg your pardon, the yes. reason why we got into the island was to help the scientists take the fish. Okay. So if, if I may ask you, just show the oak catching the yellow tail and then going into Malcolm's smell and then we're done. Yeah. So, like so we would go to the island yeah. to help the scientists. Okay. That's effectively, okay. we'd volunteer to help them. Let's have a look. The waters surrounding Bird Island are rich in nutrients. In pursuit of these nutrients, an abundance of marine life. Fish and sharks of all shapes and sizes. It is for this reason that Dr. Smale has chosen Bird Island for an important shark research program. Bird Island is one of the tagging sites we've got for a variety of sharks, predominantly ragatou sharks and gully sharks, but we tag a variety of others too because it's part of a broad-based plan to better understand aging of sharks. In order to achieve maximum results, Dr. Smale has forged a close working relationship with a small group of conservation-minded anglers. Popular South African angler Ricky Jacobs realizes the importance of protecting and conserving our rapidly declining fish stocks. Might just cut me off. You're like a raggy. No, I think it's a raggy. That's what it feels like. That's a good one. Yeah, I'll try and pull him in. Yeah. That's strong. Yeah. Again, so uh, Queenback. Place and it's it's really uh, you know yeah it's a fisherman's dream to go there. Yeah. And more sure. importantly, the reason why that place is in a in yeah. good condition is because it's looked after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The guys are there. To, they tag. Yeah. They check back. They make sure that they they check in on what's happening. It's going into the below the cartilage and support the fin to keep it going. Okay, she looks fine. Come on, girl. See, it's at a bite, it's all green. It's going to be below the tag, eh? Yeah. It's like a bite, yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, but but, yeah, yeah. So you're talking about the, the island being protected. Um, you'll recall that after we had this whole permanent poaching epidemic, they actually closed the island off and mm -hmm. you had certain boundaries. Okay. And one of the last times that we went there, um, we went to with just on the edge of the boundary to fish. It was just within fishable waters. Yeah. And we had a 
big duck with probably six or seven armed guys, R4s, Jeez. racing out to us, riding around us, making sure that we were just outside the, yeah, the levels. Yeah. So that okay. sort of protection it's works. It's good. Uh, yeah. That's what keeps yeah. it uh, safe. And if we can do that sort of monitoring yeah. in other protected areas. Correct. Well, good to, know. Good to know the guys are, the guys mm -hmm. are around. You know, mm -hmm. they, they need to protect our areas. But guys, thank you so much, man. Uh, yes, sir, Bird we Island. Uh, we, I see. learned a lot about Bird Island tonight, for sure. <laughs> and, well, and now Ray, you know who it is. Fais, thank you so nice. much. And Ray, thank you, thank you for, for, for uh, thank spending you. some time with us. Nice to see thank you, you to our sponsors. Thank to you, Gary and, and Genevieve. Thank, thank you to Gary for doing our tech here. And then uh, Sovereign and Fitch and Leeds as well, as well as our sponsor, Spa. And uh, join us next week. Um, next week is... Uh, we're gonna have Busy Shades. Oh yes, it's 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 the Ken, Ken J. Larkin is uh, oh, unfortunately is, is, his health is not is not good, and they are having a, the, the whole band is having a um, a big uh, bash at the music kitchen, and we're going to speak to the Ken J. Larkin band and all the musos uh, of that era next week as well. So if you're into into the old all these music, we we into it next week uh, in big in a big way. You know, all in the studio. Thank you for joining us on Gina Spot, and uh, we'll see you next Tuesday, half past six. We're in. That's right, we're going to go and we're going to play out with the video as well. Science has revealed that the small rocky outcrop, measuring no more than two miles in circumference, has for centuries provided an ideal home for a myriad of life forms. Never mind your liver, get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Get to Gino's spot. Gino's spot. Have a laugh, have a giggle, and exercise your middle, have a Gino's shot.